All right. Uh, as you all know, I give a recap of what's happening uh, last week before I start my message. Just one of the great things that happened last week was it's our 10th year anniversary. So uh, we've celebrated our 10 years as a married couple, Caminita Amino. And so we went out and uh, just just the two of us and we left the kids you know, to uh, to feed for themselves. You know? So uh, here's our picture, 20 pounds. Uh, uh, sorry. This is our picture, 20 pounds lighter. This was our prenup picture, right? That was, I think, 2004. Right, this was taken seventh year on our marriage, and this was taken this week. Nakita niyo naman yung transformation ni Tami, no? So, uh, medyo walang nangyari sa akin, no? Tumataba lang ako, but uh, wait, ano? Kasi grabe mag-alagang, laka lang na. So, anyway, thank you really for, you know, I want to honor you as a church because you've helped us in our marriage. You keep our uh, Sabbath day sacred. You don't call us on Mondays. You don't set appointments with us. We just want to thank you for that. And uh, really, those are precious times that I have with my wife and with my kids. And I thank you for understanding us. Na may buhay din kami, tapos trabaho din, may ministry din. But really, it's fun to pastor and lead the church like this church. So just want to thank you for that in behalf of Tammy. All right, today we're looking at Uncensored, we're on week two, and our topic is sex, right? And we'll look at it in a biblical perspective, on a worldview of how the Bible sees sex. And last week, we talked about how sex is a gift. It's a gift from God. It's not a curse. It's a gift. Let's not abuse the gift of sex because it is God's gift. And, all, and so if you want to learn more about that, I won't do the recap. Na, no. You can go and download our podcast, so Victory Green News, or watch it on YouTube for that. But today, let me jump off now, and we'll be talking about who the authority is when it comes to, to the subject of sex. Now, sobrang daming authority na pagdating sa sex. You go to social media. Uh, since bata pa ako, may mga sex experts na nandyan na lumalabas and would give us a lot of advices on how to do it. Some sobrang sablay from love experts on radio would tell you it's okay to commit adultery basta hindi ka lang mahuli. You know, so many worldviews out there. And again, as what I said last week, the Christian worldview is the most progressive worldview. Ang old-fashioned is when you start treating women as objects, start treating marriage as if it's a light thing. It's not progressive thinking. And so when Paul addressed the Corinthian church, he was saying, no, no, that's not how it should be. Here's how Christ wants it to be. And he levels up the value of men and women and marriage to a whole new level. And that's why people who are old-fashioned were saying, you're so, you're, you're so progressive. Right? And baliktad no ngayon, binabaliktad nila, old-fashioned daw tayo. Baliktad, old-fashioned yun. Since the beginning, may prostitution, may adultery. And now we're saying, God is raising up a standard and, and saying, we're special. We're God's people. We're God's children. God created us to love each other in the context of how He meant it to be. Marami tayong binabasa na word na love, uh, acceptance. All of that, sometimes we view it in the filter of man. Not in, the fit, not in the eyes of God. Because when God talks about love, there's respect and there's honor. And so we want to jump on, off today from that, from last week, and look at Genesis 2, verse 24 and 25. It says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not, what? Ashamed. In the beginning, when Adam and Eve were created, they had no clothes, but they felt no shame. They saw each other, hindi awkward, right? It's like when they saw each other, they said, I think this is a thing called forever, all right? Or tadhana, or whatever. Diba? Parang walang, hindi sila nahiya. Parang ayos to, okay to. And that is how God created it to be. There was no malice, there was no shame. Why? Because God authored sex. It's a gift from God. God created for man and woman to have sex. And it's the most natural thing a husband and wife needs to be doing. And so when we say God authored sex, that also means He has the authority when it comes to sex. Tama? Kung sino gumawa ng isang bagay, isa yung nakakaalam kung ano ang purpose nun, right? He should know what 
it is supposed to do and how it can enhance the lives of people. Am I right? If something's wrong with my clicker, where do I bring this? I don't bring it to Unimart or to the Pearl Shop. I go and bring it on the third floor where I bought this one. Why? Because they know how to fix this because they authored this one. They created this one. God created sex. And so we want to go back to the authority when it comes to sex, which is God. It means when there's talk about sex, radios, TV, shows, should go to the church and say, Ano nga ba ang sex? Paano ba yan? Ano bang purpose niyan? Paano ba ma-enhance? Dapat tayo po ang mga experts pagdating dyan. Hindi yung church yung tahimik when it comes to sex. We've got to talk about such things. Why? Because it is a wonderful gift from God. It shouldn't be offensive when it's talked on the pulpit. Iba naman pagbastos, no? Pag sinasabi mong bastos or in a light manner. But when you look at it in the light of Scripture, it is something that we need to talk about in a biblical sense so that we can respond well and at the same time apply this in our own families. And for singles, apply this on your future marriage. Now, since God gives us guidelines and principles... We will look at some of the principles today, and I'll try to get a little more practical at the half of my message on how we can enjoy God's gift of sex, right? It's what I said, God authored sex. In Proverbs 5, verse 18 to 20, we'll just look at three verses today as our main text. Let me read it to you. Solomon said, may your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe, a graceful deer, and may her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. This was like a song being written by Solomon of how marriage should be. Okay? Then he goes to verse 20. Why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? A woman who's not your wife. Why go there when you can be fully satisfied with the gift that God has given you, which is your wife, right? By the way, I, I see some kids. Now, we have kids' church pala there because, again, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to jump on ice because I'm not good at ice skating. So, uh, you, you can actually bring them there, Pop, if you feel like this would be, because this is going to get awkward as we progress. So, uh, you have time to bring them there if they're under 12 years old for that. Okay. Now, in Proverbs 5.18, it says there that may our fountain be blessed and may the man, the husband, rejoice in the wife of his youth. Right? And he says, a loving doe, a dear, may her breast satisfy you always. Now, the word satisfy that was used in Proverbs 5.19 is a word called, in Hebrew, called Rava. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin ng Rava? Ang ibig sabihin ng Rava, pag tinignan mo, yung meaning niya is to satisfy, to bath, and to fulfill. So Solomon was writing, he was saying, the wife of your youth, according to Scripture, would be the one who would Rava. Ibig sabihin, magtrabaho siya ka, magralava siya. Okay, no. Rava means to satisfy you. You're not going to look anywhere else for satisfaction because you've entered into a covenant with this woman, not your girlfriend, not your living partner, your wife. Only your wife can bring you to a state of rava. Okay? Pakisabi sa katabi mo, rava. Yeah, marunong na kayo ng Hebrew word. Yeah. Rava, dami. Okay. Rava. Okay? <laughs> Yung mga ibang lalaki, relate na relate. Oh, ako yun. Nagra-rava. Okay. To satisfy. To fulfill. It means celebrating 10 years of marriage, only one woman can satisfy me. Rava, which is Tammy, my wife. Nobody else can do that as I walk in this covenant marriage, right? And she was only able to rava when we entered into marriage. We didn't have sex before marriage. Why? Because it won't be rava, okay? It would be buntis, okay? 
It's rava, which is to satisfy that you and your wife. God designed sex to satisfy both man and woman in the context of marriage. Okay? Um, in fact, there's a thing called oxytocin, which would scientifically mababack up niya yung word na rava. Oxytocin is a powerful hormone. When we hug or kiss a loved one, oxytocin level drives up. Okay? So, pag niyakap ko si Tammy, may oxytocin daw na lumalabas sa aming dalawa. Alright? That, that makes us, you know, uh, uh, excited. Alright? It also acts as a neurotransmitter in the brain. In fact, the hormone plays a huge role in pair bonding. Okay? So that's oxytocin. You can research more on that. But God created this hormone that when I kiss my wife, it would bring rava or pleasure. It would satisfy us. It's different when I kiss my lola. All right? And beso beso, my friends, it cannot be on a state of rava. Okay? And then... And some of us, we might miss this because in Proverbs 5, 19, it says, the wife of your youth will be the one who will satisfy you. What does that mean? It doesn't matter if you're growing older. When you look at your spouse, you look at her and say, that is the wife of my youth. Nung bata pa kami, na in love na ako dyan, I entered into a covenant and she is the most beautiful woman in the world. She is my standard of beauty. That was what Solomon was saying. For you to be in the state of Rava, you've got to look at your wife and no matter what happens, whether she grows, uh, she grows, okay, uh, vertically, horizontally, it's kayong bahala. Whatever happens when I look at my wife, she is my standard of beauty, right? When my parents got married, I saw their wedding picture. Grabe, ang payat ni mama, payat ni papa. Eh? Dad's standard of beauty is my mom. And my mom has changed from coke sakto to coke litro, okay? But now, kumukoke sakto siya ulit. It doesn't matter in whatever state she is in, she will be my standard of beauty. That's why our wife would always ask us questions like, Pag tumababa ako, mahal mo pa rin ako. Di ba? Tama ba? Tinatanong niya yan. Pag naaksidente ako, tapos na ganun yung mukha ko, mahal mo pa rin ba ako? Di ba? Sabi ni Tami one time, nag-date kami, pag nag-gain ako 200 pounds, plus 200, mamahalin mo pa ba ako? Hirap, no? Mga ganun tanong, no ba? So I told her, bakit? Goal mo ba yun? Okay, so... <laughs> Minsan matanong lang eh, no? But she needs to be the standard of your beauty. This is Pastor Bojo's wife, and that's my wife. She is my standard of beauty. Not Rona for Bojo, it's Rona for me, it's Tammy. So even if Tammy would ask, mas maganda siya, no? Hindi, mas maganda ka. Kahit na mag-awa kami ni Bojo, standard of beauty ko, misis ko. Ganun din sa kanya. Right? And we don't have to vote and look for public votes who's more beautiful because for us, we married the wife of our youth. I got married 20, when I was 25. I'm now 35. And she is still my standard of beauty. It won't change. She got pregnant. She was the most beautiful pregnant woman ever. Right? She got... Uh, she, whatever she's got, she's got it all. Okay. She's got it, all right? She's my standard of beauty. Now, kung katabi mo yung wife mo, tingnan mo nga ulit, sabi mo, you are my standard of beauty. Yeah, pag, uh, yeah. All right. Ngayon, pagdala mo dito, hindi misis mo, tas ka-holding hands mo, all right? Next verse for you, okay? <laughs> we'll convict you with the power of the Holy Spirit and His Word. All right? <laughs> Proverbs 5.20 why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? The word that was used in verse 20 is the Hebrew word shaga. Pakisabi nga shaga. Shaga means to stray, to wander, and be devoured. 
Now, sa Hebrew, kala mong galing, no? Sa Hebrew, okay? Now, in Hebrew, when a word can be a picture word. So, when it says shaga, the picture might be a man was walking, he got lost, and he was devoured by a lion. Shaga. Okay? Man was walking, may manhole, nahulog siya, namatay, kinain ng ninja turtles. Shaga. Okay? He's devoured. It's a picture word. And he says, if it's not the wife, it's not your covenant wife, what happens? You now go to Shaga. Eh, pero nagmamahalan naman kami, papaksal ako naman si Shaga. What that means is, pakasalan mo na. Ano pang inaantay mo? Eh, yung banda namin, hindi pa kumikita eh. It's Shaga. It's hard to be blessed when you're standing on sin and your foundation is wrong. There can't be any bless. Kahit ilayhans namin kayo hanggang makalbo, ha? The blessings of God can't come. Why? It's shaga. You're wandering away. You're lost. And we've got to put you back. Adultery is not just physical sex, but according to Scripture, if you look at the woman lustfully, it is adultery. It's shaga. So even as a single, don't say, oh, pang mga married lang to No, no. If you're a single and you look at a woman lustfully, you're preparing yourself for shaga. It's not helping you. Porn won't help you. It will let you wander away to be devoured by that. So the question is two choices. Your sex life can either be rava or it could be shaga. Best-selling author and pastor Mark Gunger explained this scientific, psychological thing that happens and he calls it imprinting. Okay? Alam ko na panood nyo to sa Twilight, pero iba to sa Twilight. Okay? Imprinting means you're connecting the context with the experience. Okay? Uh, last night, my family was in our place. We're having dinner. Merong papi yung kapatid ko. Yung, yung ate ko, takot na takot sa aso. So niloloko ko, gaganyanin ko yung legs niya. <laughs> pa- parang alam niya na na ako na. As in obvious na. <laughs> okay, bakit? May context siya. Takot siya sa aso nung bata. Siguro hinabol siya or what. Habulin kasi yung ate ko. No? So, <laughs> diba? so, naka-imprint na sa kanya ang aso. Hindi ko yan magiging pet. Right? Because it's imprinted on her. The same way that with our sexual experiences, there's an imprint that happens that my first sexual experience would define the context of how I view sex. Okay? Like for a man, those who have their first sexual experience outside of marriage, single pa siya, they had sex, tend to imprint on the, on the loss of of illicit sex. The root, the context was lost. Walang commitment, di kita papakasalan, mag-sex tayo. So yung imprint niya sa sex ngayon is, it's just lust. It's not love. I don't really love you. I actually don't have plans with you. I just wanna have sex with you. And so that's the first sexual experience. Tumatatak daw siya. It's an imprint that happens to us. Now, those who have their first sexual experience in the context of marriage tend to imprint on the girl, on the wife. That's why I said the most glorious sex is your sex on your honeymoon, right? Because that's your first, and it's a great gift to give to your spouse. Now, when a woman experiences experiences sex without commitment, her imprint is that she, she soon learned falsely that sex means little to nothing. Yeah. Oh, tayo naman eh. Diba? Let's do it. Oh, sige ha. Papatunayan ko talaga, love kita. So, ginawa, tapos iniwan. So, for her now, the imprint is that, ay, walang kwenta yan. Loko lang ako. Yeah. Why? Because nothing happened as a result. No meaningful, meaningful result ensued and the guy does not call back. The girl then gets married and they think sex is no big deal. So, ang tingin nila ngayon sila lahat ng lalaki, ay, ganun talaga lahat ng lalaki. Which is not true. It's not true. It's not true for me. Sometimes I tell Tammy, can we just talk? No, that's a joke. Okay, anyway. 
but it's a big deal for me. Why? Because it's exclusive. I don't go around. She doesn't go around. It's something that we put so much value and weight. This is just for us. Nobody's coming in between us. It's just us. And we take it now to a whole new level of commitment and trust and intimacy. It's like a knife in the hand of a two-year-old. It can be very dangerous and unwise. Like sex, if used properly in the context of how God designed it, it can be a tool for building families and making marriages stronger. But if misuse and abuse, it can lead to a miserable life and damage to relationships. So, if you're single here today, okay, word for the day, wait. But I'm not a virgin anymore. Okay, starting today, wait. Okay, wait. Reward comes to those who wait. Right? I was a virgin when I got married. So my only sexual imprint was my wife. Okay? The great thing is that there will now be no comparison whatsoever because she's my imprint. Right? Now, again, there's grace available for you. You say, oh, I mess up. Oh, no. It's okay. We've counseled so many singles who are now married and they're having a great marriage. Why? God is bigger than any imprints. His grace is more than enough than any imprints. So you can rely on God's grace for that. So don't feel like, oh. No, no. God is there. God is in the business of redeeming people. So Solomon reminds us not to awaken love until the right time because having sex outside marriage has its consequences. Kaya nga yung book sa Song of Songs, the famous book on romance would say, do not awaken love until the time is right. Right? The, the woman said, I charge the women here Lakas nung dating niya, sa Song of Songs, verse, chapter 2, verse 7. I charge you by the gazelles and by the those of the field, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Okay? And the only way you would start to think about sex is in the context of marriage. And that's what we teach our young people. We tell our young people, why are you dating? Is there an intent for marriage? Wala ho, ano lang? Para po may holding hands. Ne, ne, hindi pwede yan. Okay? You want to put it to a higher premium and value. Don't enter into a relationship dahil kinikilig ka lang. May bala ka ba dyan? 13 years old ka pa lang, may bala ka ba dyan? Di ba? Oh, maglalaro po kami. Hindi. Right? Is there marriage in mind? And that's how you need to train your kids. The only time you're going to court someone is if you're ready for marriage. You're thinking about marriage. You're not going to play around. You're not going to fool around. You're thinking about marriage before you enter into one. Now, people would say, you know, I never really planned to be unfaithful to my spouse. Tama ba? Sino ba dito, pinano ko talaga since day one. When we said I do, I would be unfaithful to my spouse. Right? And we say, I won't do that, but here, let me, let me, let me challenge your thinking. Some of us, we do think that way. We do. We go shaga. The day we say I do, right? Even before we say I do, we're already going shaga instead of pursuing rava. Singles and married, men and women, when we feed on porn, it's committing adultery. It's having that, it's premeditated. Okay? I'm thinking about it. I'm getting into this knowing it will destroy my marriage and my sex life, but I'm getting into it. So, to say, you know, I'm not really planning or whatever. No, you're planning. You're going shaga here. Okay? You don't want rava, and so you're now settling with something that's, that's just watch rather than experienced. And so what we want to do today is I want to share to you, and again, I want to get practical. And then we'll follow this up on Wednesday, 7 p.m. in our D-Day. Right? We'd like you to come and join us for Wednesday. But today, let me share to you eight ways 
on how to affair-proof your marriage. And this is even for singles, right? So don't think this is for married people. It's actually for singles as well. How to affair-proof your marriage. How not to go shaga. Okay? Number one right, is to visualize the effects of sexual sin. Right? Proverbs 5. Let's go back to Proverbs 5, verse 3 to 5. It says, For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. Solomon knew this. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. This was his downfall. Women. Lots of them. All right? Pag woman lang, it won't be your downfall. Women, that would be your downfall. Right? So, Solomon was saying, at first, it feels good. But later on, as you get deeper into that, you start to see it leads to death. Visualize the effects of sexual sin. One of the things that has kept me as a virgin when I was courting Tammy was a vision. And I kid you not, I have this vision. I have white hair. I'm sitting down, and I have my apos with me, and, and we're telling them our love story. And we're saying, you know what? Daddy, your Lolo, we really love your Lola. Well, what's her name again? <laughs> But I had that vision. I was telling them my love story and how we remain pure and holy before the Lord. Now, on the other hand, if you're walking in thin line, you've got to visualize now the effect of what you're going to do. Visualize how you can see, you're seeing your kids and your wife hurt. I would crush Tammy who has been faithful for, to me for the past 10 years because of one foolish decision to go shaga. Visualize court proceedings, millions of pesos. Visualize dragging God's name in a bad light. Seeing yourself as a hypocrite or even losing my ministry. And my integrity, not just as a pastor, but in whatever I do. If I can't be faithful to my wife, how can I be faithful with the finances of my business? If I can cheat on my wife, I can cheat on anybody. You see? Once you start to see the implication kasi, of the decision she'll make, you don't even want to go there. Now, I know for some, di nga, pag parang mas exciting. Di ba? Bawal tumawid, nakamamatay. Exciting tumawid. <laughs> it's true. That's why it's not just one step or one way on how to affair-proof your marriage. Some of us, our hearts are so hardened, this won't have even any effect on us anymore. Second thing is to set clear boundaries with the opposite sex. Okay? Set clear boundaries with the opposite sex. You've got to know your line. You've got to know, I'm not crossing that. I'm not playing on the line. I'm as far away from the line as ever. I remember when we were in Tagaytay, we we visited the zoo. And we were walking around. And kami lang ata yung nasa zoo at that day. Since it was, I think, a Monday. And it's our Sabbath, so nobody goes on a Monday to the zoo. And we were chatting with the zookeeper. Imagine again, close kami, parang we connected. Huh? And so he said, Bro, dadalin kita dito sa tiger. And we went to the, ano ba, tig- cubs, ba yung mga baby tiger? Yeah, cubs, okay? Yeah, ito mga cubs. Gusto nyo ba? Labas po natin para ma, ano nyo, malaro-laro nyo po. Di ba? So, ang cute-cute nyo. Oh, sure, sure. Kasama ko mga anak ko. So, di nangangagat yun ha. Hindi ho, hindi ho, sir. Sure ka, sure. Nung nilabas, oh. Pagka-drag mo, bigat pala, no? kahit kab lang, bigat. Mamaya, gumaganon na sa amin. Di ba? Parang ako naman, huy, dito mga anak ko. Di ba? Mali yung sinabi mo. Di ba? And we've, I've learned my lesson from that day on. 
tiger is a tiger, whether it's small or baby or big. It's a tiger. You don't touch it, okay? You shoot it, okay, or whatever, but you're not bringing it near your baby. And I've learned my lesson. Why? It means I can't play along the lines. I need to set clear boundaries. Kaya nga, ganun-ganun yung cage niya na hindi mo pwede lagay yung fingers mo eh. Right? Because it's dangerous. And no matter who, whoever expert that is that would say it's not harmful, I won't believe that expert anymore. And there's a lot of experts in the world today when it comes to sex. Oh, try it. Living in is okay. You've got to try it first. You know, yeah, it's okay to have uh, premarital sex. At least you know if you're sexually... Comp- and they'll label themselves as experts, but you know who's our authority. God authored sex. Therefore, He's the authority when it comes to sex. Stay away from places and lines where we know are tempting to us. Boundaries are important. There's a study they made about boundaries with a group of kindergarten students. And they had fences around their playground and every recess they would play. And then some experts came and said, you know what? You know why the kids are like that? They're not as happy. It's because you put fences around your playground. You've got to take away the boundaries so that they could explore. So they made an experiment. The next day, they took out the fences. You know what happened? Recess came out. For the next three days, the kids couldn't play the same way as they played when there were fences. And when asked why, the kid says, we feel like it's not safe. Because you've taken away boundaries. Don't think boundaries are old-fashioned. When God wor- God's Word says that sex is within the confines of marriage and do not defile the marriage bed, say, uh, God, grabe ka, cosmic killjoy ka. Hindi. Tinutulungan tayo ni Lord. Mahal tayo ni Lord. Kaya may fences. It's to keep us. Now, the fences don't have the power to make us stop sinning, but it's there for a safeguard. Y- you get what I mean? Ibig sabihin, I don't know if I said it last week, you can put all the software so that porn sites won't come in, you'll still find a way around the wall. It has no power, but it's good that it should be there. Right? Why? The Bible says in Psalm 16, 6, my boundary lines have fallen in pleasant places. Okay? Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Sabi ni ni David, pag may boundaries, those are good. Those are God's gift. Boundaries are good. Right? And so, we've created boundaries within our marriage. And I've shared to you some of the boundaries that we have. I've blogged about it already. Just the boundaries that we have. I don't counsel the opposite sex. I don't drive in the car alone with someone who's not my wife. Right? We've created boundaries. I don't chat the opposite sex. Right? I just don't do that. Those are boundaries that we have. Stay as far away from the line. Boundaries are good. Some couples, we would hear some couples say, you know what? We're struggling with our marriage and our sex life. That's why we decided to watch porn together. Now, here's the problem with that. Why it's shaga? It's shaga because, number one, porn won't satisfy you. And every time you say that, what you're saying is, my wife cannot rava me. That's why we're doing this. It, the root is rejection. It's not acceptance and love. It's not mutual. It's just selfishness. So it's shaga. It cannot be on that root, right? Godly sex never starts with rejection. Let your wife satisfy you. Rava. Singles. When you're saying, I'm having sex because deep inside you want to be accepted, that's shaga. You're being devoured because you're being reje- you feel like you're being rejected. The root is rejection, not love. Because if that person would love you, he'd say, you know what? We'll get married first before we even have sex. Boundaries are important. Proverbs 29.18, it says, where there's no revelation, there's no revelation of God's Word. People would cast off restraint. Walang boundaries. Anything goes. But happy is he who keeps the law. In First Thessalonians 4, verse 4 to 5, 
that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. We know God. And we've got to learn how to respect each other with that. Here's the verse in Proverbs 29. Without revelation, people would cast off restraint. Third, I'll be quick with our last six. Three no's and three always. Third, never be alone with the opposite sex. Okay. Never be alone with the opposite sex. Whether it's a business trip, whether it's just the two of you in the car, never be alone with the opposite sex. It's just not wise. Okay. Mas dangerous pa yung kaysa tumawid sa edsa. I'm telling you. All right? Guys who committed the lottery would said it was an accident. It's not an accident. You made the decision to be alone with the opposite sex. And so that happened. Yung lunch kayo, may asawa ka na, tapos may kalunch ka sa office, na opposite sex, tapos kayong dalawa lang. Never do that. Mas safe pa yung Russian relay. Yung... Parang ganun yan eh. Diba? Parang, you're, it's just not wise to do it. Uh, one of our leader, si Randall, has this rule. And his, that's his, Randall's wife, Mia, not, her, not his daughter. Okay. That's Mia. Okay. Randall has this rule. Every time it's an out-of-town trip and talk that I'm making, I tell the company, you need to pay for my wife. If not, no matter how high that is, I'm not getting that. He's rejected a couple of high-paying uh, talks because of this rule. He says, plus one always. If my wife can, I'll bring my daughter and my son. But it can never be just me alone. Right? Chinky goes on a whole new level. Balikan Hong Kong. <laughs> I'm not with my wife. I'm going back home. Right? It means, you know what? I'll do whatever it takes to safeguard my marriage. What are they saying? Is that being oh, so bright, extreme? Okay, let's just say it's extreme. It's okay to be extreme. Yeah. We're married. Yeah. With all the stories of our friends who fell and committed adultery, it's actually okay to be extreme in some ways. Right? Counseling or talking with the opposite sex, may problema. Ikaw yung nakipag-usap. Yeah. Yung barkada mo nung high school, babae, ikaw lalaki, may problema ako eh, ganyan. Ikaw lang yung, naalala ko kasi yung dati, nung 16 pa tayo, ikaw yung tinatakbuhan ko. Ah, ganun ba? Ika, dito ka sa shoulders ko. Never be alone with the opposite sex. Never discuss about your marriage with the opposite sex. Bestie, problema ako kay wifey eh. Yeah. Parang hindi niya ako naintindihan, hindi tulad mo, naintindihan mo ako palagi. Oo, kasi hindi kayo lagi magkasama kaya naintindihan kanya. <laughs> yeah. Tandaan nyo yung mga co-workmates nyo, yung mga may gusto sa inyo sa labas, yung nakikita yung potential nyo. Nakikita potential nyo kasi hindi kayo lagi nakikita. Pagkasama mo na yan 24 hours, lahat ng baho mo lumalabas na rin. Yeah. And it will be the same cycle all over. Never discuss about marriage with, with the opposite sex. That's the importance of Victory Group. That's why we have discipleship. Okay? Men, you have problems with your wife? Talk to a spiritually mature man in church. Right? We've got hundreds of them leading groups every week. So it's not an excuse. Wala akong makausap eh. Hindi nila akong maintindihan. Yung barkada ko. Bro, may problema ako. Hindi, inom mo lang yan. Kaya mo yan. Diba? Go to church. There's, there's a lot of godly men who can, who can lead you in the right way and say, that's not the way to go. That's shaga. Women, talk to spiritually mature women. Okay? Singles, Get rid of the friend girl. Right? The best friend ko talaga yung opposite sex eh. Okay. It's almost the same thing. It's just you don't have a spouse now. 
But imagine if you have a spouse now and your best friend is not your wife, but your girl, friend girl, who was actually for years praying that it would be the two of you. That you made an agreement by 45 if you're not married, it would be the both of you. Right? That's the friend girl. Kawawa ang babae sa friend girl. Okay. Kawawa ang kawawa. Wala siyang pinangawakan. You're trying to have a girlfriend without commitment by having a friend girl. And if things go wrong, I have a friend girl. If things go right, buy friend girl. It's just not wise. Never f- number five. Okay. Never hang around the wrong environment. I had a guy come to me and said, you know what, pastor? I have so many girls. I've met so many girls. I've never seen someone who I feel like I could build a family. I said, where are you looking for girls? You know, go to bars. Go to... Bro, you're looking at the wrong aquarium. Why are you going to the sharks? We've got great, godly, Christ-like, discipled women in church. That's your aquarium. Literally, fish sticker. Okay? Christians. All right? Why go outside when there's a lot here? All right? Now, I'm not saying, let, okay, let's have a thing going on. I, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is know the environment where you look for one. All right? You want someone who loves Jesus, who worships Jesus, you go to the bar for that. All right? They need Jesus. Right? You go here where people love Jesus. Technically, huh? not everybody who goes here loves Jesus. Right? Some of them are my staff. Okay, no, no, okay. Okay. Sometimes say, we tend to put ourselves in tempting situations. Yeah. Some of us, we've been hurt. Yung love life natin. We hurt tayo. You know, I was fooled. This, this guy didn't love Jesus. And we were together. And yung pala, there was a third party. And now I'm alone. I don't know what to do. And then somebody came along, pastor. He's so sweet to me. Uh, sister, is, uh, does he love Jesus? Uh, getting there, it's, again, practically, it's not practical. Right? You're, you're again setting yourselves up for Shaga rather than Rava. Okay. Six, always be accountable to someone you trust and respect. Right? Again, when you go to church, and, and I might hit some toes here, we always move in discipleship context. What does that mean? When you say, I want to be part of a victory group, I want to be Christ-like. I want to be a follower of Jesus. That means you've got to open up your lives to someone who might speak to your face and say, that's wrong, brother. You've got to repent of that. Bro, mag-break na kayo pagkaganon lang. You'll hear words you won't like. Why? It's in the discipleship context. Will not sugarcoat things. Right? Somebody would come to me and this usually happens. Oh, can you bless us? You know, we're just... Boyfriend and girlfriend, got her pregnant. Can you bless us? Or I'll pray for the kid. Let's make it healthy. But, bro, do you have a plan? You want me to pray for you? Let me ask first. Is this leading to marriage? Because you know you've sinned, right? Uh, Yeah, Pastor. I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah, but I have to say it. Why? Because you're in church. Maybe people outside church won't say it. Why? We love you so much that we would rather offend you than sugarcoat whatever's happening because we care for you. Okay? So sometimes you might hear words and advices you won't like, but again, it's in the discipleship context. Right? Now, if you don't want discipleship, church might not be the right place for you. Now, am I saying if you're sinning, we won't accept you? Please, don't hear what I'm not saying. Okay? We've got people who mess up and they're still messed up until now. They're here. We love them. We don't say, do you tithe? I won't pray for you because you're disobedient. No. We love you. Okay? We've never shun away people. We've accepted people. But it's different from tolerating and accepting. We accept. We might not tolerate. 
your, the sin, but we'll accept you. Who am I not to accept you? God accepted me. I'm a sinner, but God accepted me. Now, He won't tolerate my sin. That's why He said, it's shaga. You'll be devoured, but I love you. And I'm warning you, that's shaga. That's not rava. I love you so much. Here's rava. Don't go shaga. Rava. Dito sa rava, dami. Okay. Dito rava ngo. Okay. Diyan mabaho yan. All right. Seven, always keep your marriage a priority. Okay, let me make this so clear for everyone. Married people, married men, one woman. Focus. Sabi nga ni Will Smith, never lose focus. Okay, one woman. All you need is to live for one woman. Okay, to work for one woman. One, not two, one. Okay? Singles. Wala ka pang girlfriend, all you need is to uto one woman. Okay? To be blinded by one man. I'm telling you, life is so simple if you see it in that way. What God is saying, you'll enter into covenant with only how many? Just one. Plan for that one. Value that one. Respect that one. Honor that one. Date that one. It's just one. It's not too hard. It's not too. Solomon had 1,000. We're calling you to have one. Focus on that one. Keep your marriage priority. Love that one. Connect with that one. Speak to that one. Right? Enjoy that one person. Keep it your priority. Singles, living in is not the destination. Living in is saying you're not priority. Okay? Why? Just one. One. Tapos plano mo live in one. One na lang. Pakasalan mo na. One lang yan. The law said just marry one. Why can't you do? Hirap eh. If you can't focus on one, don't get in there. Okay? Because it's just one. Let me share to you a live-in vow. If you're living in, here's your vow. Again, we love you, but that's shaga. And let me share to you how to go rava. Living in, ganit, di ba pag marriage may vows? Yeah? Sarap niyan eh, yan yung highlight eh. Di ba pag kinakasal may, may, may vows? Pag live in, ganito yung vow, vow. I, the guy, take you, the girl, to be my cohabitant, to have sex with you, and to hold you responsible for half of the bills, to love you and take advantage of you from this day forward, or as long as our arrangements works out, I will be more or less faithful to you as long as my needs are met. And if nothing better comes along, if I should break up with you, it doesn't mean this wasn't special to me. Because I love you almost as much as I love myself. I commit to live with you for a while, so help me in the name of sex and selfishness. Amen. That's living in. There's no commitment. It's not focused on one. It's too many things. When God says you enter into that covenant, love that one. Respect that one. Honor that one. Number eight. Let me end with this. Always nurture your relationship with Christ. And, and I made this my last because this, forget the seven, you get the eight, you get one to seven. Right? Always nurture your relationship with the Lord. Imagine, if you spend an hour with the Lord. Sino dito nagbabasa ng Bible, nagpre-pray? Right? Imagine mo lang, oh, you spend an hour with the Lord. Doon sa kwarto mo. After mo ng one hour with the Lord, anong feeling? Ha? Huh? Satisfied, di ba? Rava, di ba? Hindi parang after one hour with the Lord. Okay, anong ang kasalanan gagawin ko today? You won't even think about it. Why? You're in the presence of the Lord. Right? You've been touched by God in the presence of the Holy Spirit. You're in Rava. You'll never go shaga after one hour with the Lord. Now imagine, let's make the scenario different. One hour ka, looking at porn or lusting. What happens after one hour? Maka quiet time nga. Spend time nga with it. worship night nga ako. No. You go on a path of destruction, of shaga. Nurture your relationship with the Lord. Okay? Sexual sin basically says, I can't trust God to meet these needs. I can't trust God to provide these needs in the way that He chooses. Therefore, I need to go outside of His provision. 
whether that's through the internet or looking at women in ways, you should never look at them. It's really saying, you're not true, God. I can't trust you to be good. You cannot satisfy me. I'll go shaga on this one because in you there's no rava, which again is lying to ourselves. Find your satisfaction in Christ. Sin is what you do when your heart is not satisfied with God. Here's one long-term way to defeat sin, whether it's sexual or not. John Piper said this, I know of no other way to triumph over sin long-term than to gain a distaste for it because of a superior satisfaction with God. I am so satisfied with God, I won't even go there. I'm in Rava that I can even imagine myself going Shaga. That's how to defeat sin. Okay? Just to summarize, find your satisfaction in God. Find your Rava in God. Now, you're here today. Let me end. Two minutes. Even when we are unfaithful, I won't ask for the race of hands. You know, these are again unfaithful. Okay? I think all of us went through that. I went through seasons of that when I was a single, struggling with lust. Even when we are unfaithful, God remains faithful. What that means is when you are in Shaga, there is a place of Rava where we can return. And the Lord is just calling you back. And saying, find it in me, not there. Repent of your sin. Let go of your wicked ways. Because that shagait will devour you. And find your rava in me. Isaiah 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, shaga, they shall be as white as snow. Rava. Though they are like red, like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the life. If you're willing and obedient, you will experience Rava. It takes extreme action. But with the power of the Holy Spirit that God gives us, it is possible. You can go to a place of Rava.